Okay, so I think it's about time for some videos on shell scripting. And people have asked me to do this for a while. And there are a lot of videos on YouTube of people going over specific commands and stuff like that. But that's not my type of thing. I, I'm a practical person. I like to see things in action and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not going to do contrived examples. But I'm going to show you, in this video, I'm going to show you a particular script that I've written that gets me a whole lot for very little and explain how, I guess, the different mindset that you need for writing shell scripts. Because um, writing good code in, I guess, a shell script or a bash script or something like that, it's not always the same as writing something good in Python or something like that. It requires a slightly different mindset. Because, um, oh, well, as the decoration up here suggests, um, uh, shell scripting is more loyal, I guess, to the Unix philosophy. Um, you are modifying text strings directly, or text streams directly. Um, so one program outputs some text, you modify that in another program, you modify that in another program. And if you don't know what I mean, hopefully uh, it'll make sense by the end of this video. So let me show you this, I'm gonna showcase a particular script that I've written. Um, and so what this is for is for mounting USB drives. So I'm gonna insert a USB drive into my computer. Actually, I think I'll insert two, just for example. Um, so I now have two USB drives in here. So how this script works, it is for mounting, and then I have another script for unmounting these drives. So I have it mapped to super F9. So when I press that, what it does is it looks for all the mountable drives and lists them out. And I can type in which one I want uh, and select the mount that. It then asks me where do I want to mount this. So let's say I mounted it. Uh, MNT slash USB uh, 2, okay? And then if that folder doesn't exist, it'll ask me to create it. I'll say, yeah, go ahead and create it. And you can check with LSBLK and see that this has been successfully mounted. I also have an unmount script, which is similarly constructed. I might not talk about this uh, if I don't have time, or I might talk about it in another video, but it, it basically is constructed the same way. So let's go into the mounting script. So I'm gonna open up um, the script here. Now it's called D menu mount because this little um, menu up here is just D menu. That is the one dependency required. I'll talk uh, specifically about how D menu works in a second, but the idea is, I actually have a video on it. You can check it out if you want, but the idea is you can just send D menu text and it's going to give you options up here that you can select from, and then it returns the thing you selected. That's all that does. Um, but So let's go into this. Now, if you look at the actual script, it is not a complicated daemon. It's nothing fancy or anything like that. It's really just a very short uh, bash script. It's less than 25 lines. If you get rid of the comments, it's less than 20. Uh, very short. It's nothing complicated. Um, and it does exactly what I need it to do. So I'm going to just go through this and explain to you how I actually do this without needing any other dependencies from dmenu and getting all this stuff done. So let's go ahead and start up here. Uh, I'm gonna skip this line, I might talk about it later, but the first important line is this thing here. Now the first thing I wanna do is I want the script to detect what drives I can mount. Um, so at any given time, if I run, notice uh, I, here I run lsblk. Uh, and if I run that, that of course lists out all your drives and partitions. And this LP option, if I give lsblk LP, this happens to give you the full um, location of the drive. So dev SDA is where this drive is located, so to speak. Um, and it gives you this more modifiable uh, text stream or something like that. Now what I want this to do is this has produced a little, some output text, and I want to only select those drives that we could potentially mount. That is, I don't want these lines that say disk. I don't want those. I can't mount disks. I can only mount partitions. And I also don't want lines that have, you know, that are already mounted, like our boot drive, home drive, root, or this drive here that's already mounted. So what I can do for this is use grep, as this thing here says. So if I grep out, so if I run this command and I pipe the output into grep, let's say um, I, I'm piping it to grep and I'm going to search for the pattern part. Now I, you may know what grep does already, but it's pretty simple to understand. Um, what grep does is you give it a text stream 
and it will search for a particular pattern, let's say the word part, and it will only return those lines that have that pattern in it. So here we have disk and you know this line here, uh, but if we put that through grep, it's only gonna return that line that's the lines that have part in it, that pattern part. So the next thing I can do, let's say, I, I mean, I really wanna get rid of these things too because they're already mounted. Really all I want is these three drives to appear. Um, so what I can do is I can say, uh, part space and then dollar sign and what this means is um, it, You may know regular expressions, but dollar sign just means end of the line So it's going to search for part and then there's an empty space here. You can't really see it, but it's there um, And then there's an end of a line so this line matches this line matches this line matches But these won't because there's a space and then there's something else besides a, in, an end of the line so if I run this command, you'll see that it actually only returns the drives that we want to be able to choose from to mount. Okay, so that's good, that's what we want. Um, so this is what that does. And the last thing I do is I use an awk command because when I run when I run the script here, I don't need, uh, excuse me, um, I don't need all of this information. I only want, you know, the, where the drive actually is and it, you know, it's, capa it's like um, capacity, it's, uh, size or whatever, um, just so I know which one's which. So what I do here is I just awk it. So I'm gonna awk, and then uh, awk, oops, missed the key there. Uh, what you do with awk is what this effectively says is print the first column, that is gonna be this, then print an open parenthesis, then print the fourth column, which is one, two, three, four, then print a closed parenthesis and then close that command. So I'm gonna say one, uh, comma, adds a space, um, then the open parenthesis, four, close parenthesis, uh, and then close the print command. And if I do that, you'll notice that this is the output we have, and that's the exact same that I have, oh, it's the exact same I have up here. Now, what I do, so what I am doing in this line here is, I am finding all of the available drives and I'm assigning them to the mountable uh, variable. So I now have this variable mountable that has all the drives we need in the format we want them to appear in this little menu up here. Um, so the next thing I do, uh, this line isn't particularly important, but well, I guess it is. Um, what this does is it checks to see, what this says is basically if the mountable um, if the mount the variable mountable is equal to nothing, just exit the script. And that's in the case if I if I run this command and there are no partitions I could mount, just exit the script. You can't do anything. And exit with an error. You know, I, I probably and it might make sense not to have an error there, but this is just in the situation where um, you know you don't have scripts. Uh, one means error. If you have zero or nothing, that means it'll exit without an error. Um, so anyway, so you find the mountable drives. If you have no mountable drives, the script quits. That's all this says. Now in line 12 here, you know, move this up a little bit. So in line 12 here, what I do is I take those mountable drives and I'll pipe them, I'll echo them, pipe them into D menu. So as I said before, D menu is a very nice program. I'll just show you how it works. So if I take, um, let's say I take, uh, you know, I'll echo, well, I'll just actually show you what it looks like, right? So we can echo mountable usual. Oh, oops, I didn't actually set this equal to a variable. So I'm just going to replicate the line in the shell script here. So if we echo the variable mountable, it's going to output all of these things here, and we can pipe that into D menu. And what that's going to do is it's just going to make each of these lines appear as an option in D menu that we can type we can type in and select. And when we select one and press enter, D menu is going to return that text. That's all this is. Um, so that's all D menu is doing. As I said, this is not something that's installed default on most systems. So, but it's pretty much in every Linux repository. You can just install it. It's uh, an extremely useful program. I use it for so many things. Um, so anyway, so now what we're doing here is we're just um, echoing these choices to D menu so the user can choose one. Um, and what these options here, this is for case insensitivity. So normally if I you know, type something capital, it's not going to uh, select something, but if I put in I, it will. Um, you know, it's still going to, you know, it's case insensitivity, as you would expect. And the P option is, 
you know, this is the prompt if you put P before that. So uh, that'll, you know, put whatever text you have here. Um, so here I have mount which drive or whatever. Um, and the last thing here is I actually have awk because you'll see by default we're going to um, return this, you know, this entire line here. But I only really want this thing here because that's the thing I'm going to be actually running the mount command out on later on. Um, so what I do here is just awk and I print only the first element. Okay, so um, gives me this. I can choose one, and bam, there it is. Right. All right. So uh, that. So in this line. So just to you know recap, we have listed all the mountable drives. We've given them to the user for him to choose one of them, and once he does that, we assign his choice to the chosen the chosen variable. So I'm actually just going to. Uh, I'll actually do this. Repeat this in. Uh, you know, my shell here. Um, so we'll say chosen, pick that. And if I echo chosen, you'll see that, right. So now this is equal to what we just selected. Okay, so um, let me scoot down a little further. So here we have the same thing. Notice, uh, as I said before, we have this check to see if mountable, there are actually mountable drives. And if there aren't any, exit. Here I say check to see if the user actually selected a drive, if there's something that's actually equal to chosen, or if it's just em empty. And if it is empty, just exit the script because he didn't choose anything. Maybe he chose it, uh, changed his mind. Okay. So that's what's next. And if we scroll down a little further, um, now we're going to try to mount the drive. We know, so we've now gotten basically what drive we want to mount. Now we just have to, have to mount it. Now the first thing I do here is I actually just run sudo mount on the chosen drive. And why I do that is because many, so you can store drive mounting information in Etsy FS tab and a lot of people will store their drive information there. And so this will try to just mount it without a particular mount point. But if this drive is in FC, uh, FS tab um, with directory mounting settings, it will automatically mount it. Otherwise, it's just gonna say, okay, I can't mount this. I, mean, I don't know where to mount it. Um, but so uh, long story short, what this line does is, um, if you've already stored information in FS, FS tab where you want it to be mounted, it just mounts it there and exits the script successfully. You win. Otherwise, it does the thing where you have to um, select what drive or what directory you want to actually mount it in. So how do we do that? That's actually relatively easy uh, in the same way, right? So if we select one of these drives, it actually produces, sorry, my mouse, I don't have a mouse pad right now. It's sort of annoying. Um, it gives you all these li this list of all the uh, folders that you can choose from. Now this is actually automatically configured, or we we can produce this automatically with this sh uh, simple line here. Um, so this variable here, dears, I set that equal to uh, the output of a find command. So I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like. Um, so by default, find. Let's say I run find on user or something like that. It's going to find everything that's in that directory. So I'm going to find uh, in this command, uh, I'm going to find everything in mount, everything in media, everything in home, and everything in or mount. In, sorry, mnt media mount home. That was very dyslexic uh, reading there. Um, but it's going to find all of the files in here. Uh, but I'm going to specify I only want directories. Okay, so type D means only find directory. So if I go up here to find user and say type D. Now it's only printing out directories that exist, not just files. And the other option I hear, have here is max depth. So this is because I don't really want it to search for every single folder on the computer because that's going to take a long time. So instead, I only want it to search in three folders deep. You'll notice that, that so here's our first option, finding everything. That takes a little longer. Um, but if we only search three deep, that's a lot quicker. And especially if you're running something on home, you're definitely going to want this. So what this does is I'll just actually run this command. So find everything in mount in media or MNT uh, and then the actual mount drive and then home. Only those that are directories and only as deep as four or excuse me, three folders in. So if I run that, it's very quick. You have all of these different uh, folders outputted. 
Now notice also, I put this thing here, and this is just, uh, if you have any errors, actually let me rerun that, notice that there I get, I get some errors here because there's some things I can't access, or there, <coughs> there might be folders that don't exist, you might not have a slash media directory, um, and in that case I, want, I don't want to see those errors, so you can sen send errors to dev null, and so now those don't appear. So I am going to now set this output equal to, or, or I'm going to set deers equal to this output. So I can echo deers, and that's going to output all of that stuff. Or so it's prettier. You can put it in, uh, yeah, quotation marks. Okay. So now we've been doing this manually, so it takes forever. But um, man, it's it's uh, I don't know. It's in terms of actual shell. Uh, well, in terms of like actually your computer performing operations, it's very light, and of course this we're basically done at this point. So the last thing we want to do is we want to echo Deers into D menu, um, and we get this option, all of these different options here, and this is what we do here. We're just echoing these options into D menu, and the thing that someone chooses is going to be set to the variable mount point or the mount point variable is going to be set to it, you know what I mean. Um, so if I say I want to put this in, you know, MNT or something like that, it's going to return MNT, and that is what is going to be equal to the actual mount point, okay? Now at this point, we have everything we want. It took 2D menus, but we have everything we want. We have what drive we want to mount, and we have what directory we want to mount it in. Now the very last thing I do, this little if statement here, um, this just says check to see if that that directory we actually put in if that directory actually exists now if it does not exist what it's going to do is say give you another prompt in D menu where it gives you uh, the options of no or yes and it's going to say um, that mount point doesn't exist do you want to create it and if you say yes it will create it and you'll have that mount point and you will mount it um, now the final line of the script is the actual important one. Uh, so you're just going to sudo mount the chosen drive at the chosen mount point. And then this line here is just for notifications, like when I actually mount something. So let's say I, you know, mount this drive at, you know, uh, you know, USB 2 or something like that. It's actually going to show that little notification that disappeared instantaneously, but it was there. <laughs> um, so that that's actually it. Um, so this is, what, again, what I use for mounting drives. And I guess the takeaway you have to get from this is, you know, you don't have to know anything really special about the system. All of it is, is all of it is really just text manipulation. The input for this program, uh, aside from D menu, which is the thing that the user uses, really just came from the lsblk command. That's where we got our drive information. And the find command, that's where we got our directories. And then we just modified that text to give us the input to D menu. We chose the required, the things that we want from D menu. Um, and then we just uh, actually, um, you know, we just ran really one command that does what we want it to do. Um, now I should say, if you're going to copy my script and use it on your computer, just note that um, uh, you, I do have sudo, the way I constructed the script, it isn't universal. Uh, notice that I do use sudo here a couple times. And this is basically going to require that you use um, you ha your user has permission to run this kind of script without a password because there's no password prompt for this. So just bear that in mind. So if this doesn't work on your computer, just look up how to run something, run a particular command without a password, and that'll work. But really, the objective here isn't the script; it's the actual. Um, I guess the mindset behind it. Now I should say, as I said before, I do have an unmount script as well. So actually, I'll show you how that works. It works the same way. It just says unmount which drive. Um, and I'll, I'll say, you know, let's say we unmount this USB drive and it basically does the same thing. I'll brief you show, briefly show you what that looks like, um, but we'll go through it super fast. It's also very uh, simple. What I do here is I run an LSBLK command and I grep out this particular pattern that only appears, well, let's do it here. Um, notice that uh, all of the mounted drives are going to have a T, a space, and a slash in them. Uh, because this is mounted, this is mounted, and this is mounted, right? Um, so we're just grepping out only those uh, drives, 
Sorry, my nose is so itchy today. I think it's actually when I talk a lot, my nose gets itchy. It's only when I'm like doing live streams or like long videos that this happens. I don't know why. Um, so we can grep out all of our selected drives. Um, I also have an, exclu uh, an exclusion regex here. Now what I mean by that is I don't wanna give the user the ability to unmount boot or home or root. So um, basically this line says exclude those drives. That's what that's for. Um, and then I'll uh, awk it in the same way that I awked that last, uh, you know, the thing in the last, mm, excuse me, of, you know, of, excuse me, I lost my train of thought. I just awk it in such a way that it shows in the format I want. So like this drive um, on this location with, you know, this much capacity. And it works in the same way. It just asks, do you want to unmount it? you select it, and then that's that. So you can check out both of these scripts. Both of them are on my GitHub. And so hopefully this is either giving you ideas for kind of things that you can do. Um, you can, of course, steal my scripts. But I, again, the objective is getting in the mindset of doing shell scripts for personal use and other things. So hopefully this has given you some ideas. If you have any questions, suggestions, um, feel free to throw them in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time.